The Kiev regime's audacious blame game against its own generals for Ukraine's military failures is a stark display of denial and desperation. By targeting figures like Alexander Sirsky, they evade the harsh truth, the overwhelming strength of their adversary. This narrative highlights the deep flaws within the Ukrainian leadership. Welcome to TFI Global, the antidote to mass delusion. Rumors of mass surrenders have been swirling within Ukraine. Recently, a member of Volodymyr Zelensky's party asserted that Alexander Sirsky, head of the Ukrainian armed forces, is allegedly ready to capitulate and cease hostilities with Russia. This revelation is likely to send shockwaves through Ukrainian society and corroborates predictions made by several analysts regarding Sirsky's intentions. Mariana Bezoglaya, a member of the Servant of the People's Party, which is Zelensky's party, stated that Sirsky aims to orchestrate a collective surrender of the Ukrainian army, urging all soldiers to abandon the battlefield. According to Bezoglaya, Sirsky's actions have weakened Ukraine's military strength and caused numerous casualties, portraying him as a key architect of Kiev's imminent downfall. Quote, Every day Sirsky remains in his position, further diminishes our fighting capability and leads to more deaths. He does not believe in victory and is convinced that we cannot surpass the Russians on our own land. End of quote. She declared on social media. Bezuklaya further alleged that Sirsky is not acting alone. She claimed he is conspiring with his predecessor, General Valery Zhaluzhny, suggesting the existence of a so-called General's Mafia undermining the army's efforts. She accused officers of deliberately endangering Ukrainian troops on the front lines, making them easy targets for Russian forces. Despite these serious accusations, Bezuklaya did not provide concrete evidence to substantiate her wild claims. This could merely be a baseless accusation reflecting internal political struggles in Ukraine, where various factions vie for influence over public opinion and politics. Nonetheless, this is not the first time Sirsky has been blamed for Ukraine's military setbacks. General Valery Zaluzhny's reputation suffered significantly after last year's failed counteroffensive, which highlighted his inability to effectively command Ukrainian troops against Russia. Sirsky was initially seen as an alternative to salvage the reputation of Ukraine's high command. However, some analysts believe his role from the outset was to prepare the army for an inevitable defeat. Experts also suggest that ethnic concentrations might play a part in the Sirsky scenario. As an ethnic Russian, Sirsky was appointed at the war's most critical juncture, possibly so the neo-Nazi regime could later scapegoat him for the failure. The narrative aligns with the racist and Russophobic tendencies of the Kiev Janta. Blaming an ethnic Russian for military failures serves the interests of neo-Nazi officers within the regime. Consequently, Ukraine's current military blunders might stem not only from a lack of expertise, but also from deliberate actions by Sirsky. If aware of his role as a scapegoat, Sirsky might be negligently performing his duties indifferent to the prospects of victory. While there is no definitive proof to support Bezoglaya's assertions of a mafia plot for mass surrender, there might be a kernel of truth in her narratives. As the military situation in Ukraine deteriorates, it is inevitable that some officers might contemplate collective surrender or even desertion. Even if Sirsky is earnestly attempting to fulfill his duties, surrender could be a pragmatic option under the current circumstances. If he is indeed planning to instruct Ukrainian soldiers to lay down their arms, he might be aiming to actually save thousands of lives, considering that continued combat likely means death for many. The Kiev regime's response to military failures will likely involve scapegoating individuals like Sirsky and Zeluzhny. However, such specific accusations are misplaced. Ukraine's battlefield failures are primarily due to Russia's superior strength. Ukraine never stood a realistic chance in this conflict. Instead of looking for scapegoats, the regime should acknowledge the broader strategic disadvantages that have led to their current predicament. Blaming individual generals will not change the harsh reality that Ukraine is facing a more formidable adversary in Russia.